This week on Tech Wrap, from a $25 smartphone running Firefox OS to the latest and greatest $800 smartphones from Sony and Samsung, we give you all the highlights from Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. Hi, I'm Michael Josh, and this is TechRap, your weekly source for tech news, gadget reviews, app recommendations, and social media tips. Mobile World Congress, the biggest gathering of smartphone manufacturers, took place in Barcelona this week. All the big names were at MWC with something to announce. There were two new flagship smartphones from Samsung and Sony, but the biggest highlight came in the form of wearables. More on that later. First, let's start with the very bottom. Mozilla, maker of the Firefox web browser and the HTML-based Firefox smartphone OS, announced a new device that breaks records as the cheapest smartphone. At $25, the phone is made in partnership with Chinese low-cost chip maker Spreadtrum. The phone will run on the most basic of specs, a 4.5-inch display, 1.2 gigahertz processor, 128 MB of RAM, 8 gigabytes of storage, and 5 and 2 megapixel cameras. Chinese manufacturer ZTE also announced sub $60 smartphones that also run on Firefox OS. The Open C and Open 2 will debut in Latin American markets in the second quarter of 2014. Another big trend at MWC were mid range smartphones for the ever growing emerging market segment. The usual suspects, Chinese manufacturers Huawei, Lenovo, and ZTE, released updates to their mid range lineup. Huawei's Ascend P6 with its 5 megapixel wide angle front camera is being touted as a selfie cam. Lenovo adds three more smartphones to the three unveiled at CES in January, and ZTE updated its popular 6 inch phablet, the Grand Memo 2, giving it LTE connectivity and a boxy but sleek form factor reminiscent of the Sony Xperia. Even Nokia played the emerging market card following months of speculation about an Android phone and ducky teasers that didn't quite make sense, Nokia released its first Android phone at MWC. But not quite the kind of Android we expected. The Nokia X is a mid-range phone that fits right in between the Finnish giants Asha and Lumia lines. The goal for the Nokia X is to offer a sub-60 euro smartphone that's roughly $82 for what Nokia believes is an untapped market. The phone is available in three variants, the Nokia X, X Plus, and XL. The Nokia X and X Plus are 4-inch smartphones with 1 GHz dual-core processors and 3 megapixel fixed focus cameras. The X Plus has slightly more storage space. The Nokia XL comes with a bigger 5-inch display and a better 5 megapixel autofocus camera. All three phones run Android with a Lumia-like tile interface, but unlike the usual Android phone, you can't just download apps directly from Google Play. Many hoped that HTC would announce the successor to its flagship smartphone, the HTC One, which was released at last year's MWC, but that won't happen until March 25 in an event that takes place in both London and New York. Instead, the Taiwanese company also launched a pair of mid-range smartphones, the Desire 610 and 816. The Desire 816 is billed as a company's flagship mid-range phone. Available in a range of colors, the 816 comes with specs comparable to last year's high-end smartphones and a plastic unibody form factor reminiscent of the flagship aluminum HTC One. Samsung and Sony both unveiled new flagship smartphones. Sony's Z2 comes barely six months after its predecessor, the Z1. Like the Z1 Compact that debuted at CES 2014, the Z2 moves from water-resistant to waterproof with a higher IP68 rating. It also gets a minor spec bump, including the latest Snapdragon 801 processor, also announced at MWC. Its biggest change is in its display. While on the outside, it's the same phone, Sony manages to increase the screen size from 5 to 5.2 inches with a technology called Live Color LEDs that Sony claims has the widest color gamut in a mobile device today. While its camera remains the same, it is now at par with top-of-the-line smartphones it can shoot 4K video. 
flagship smartphones that are at par with everyone else is probably another theme of MWC, with manufacturers making sure that everyone else's big innovation is built into their respective smartphones. Coming from high expectations, Samsung's S5 announcement was a bit of a downer. The phone isn't the stunner we expected. There was no new form factor, no edge-to-edge -edge curved glass display. Instead, the South Korean tech giant sticks to its tried and tested formula, a three-year-old design with rounded corners and an aluminum-like plastic frame. The only aesthetic difference is a perforated faux leather back and a range of color options. Even its TouchWiz user interface didn't get the makeover many expected. Like the Z2, it also benefited from a minor bump in specs and the same Snapdragon 801 processor. It also caught up in adding all the innovations that are available on its competitors. Like Apple's iPhone 5S, the Galaxy S5 now has a built-in fingerprint scanner for unlocking the phone and making online payments. And like Sony's Xperia line of smartphones and tablets, the S5 is also water resistant and can be submerged in water up to a meter deep for about 30 minutes. But there are a couple of features worth noting. It's the only smartphone with a built-in heart rate monitor, a new ultra power saving mode that can extend your battery up to 15 days, and a new and improved camera with a DSLR type feature called phase detection autofocus, giving it the fastest autofocus in a smartphone in the world. Okay, maybe the phone isn't that big of a disappointment. The stars of MWC, however, the wearables. Sony announced a March global release date for its smart band, which it announced at CES 2014, and also a whole range of colorful options for its core fitness tracker. Huawei jumped into the fray with its TalkBand B1. The wearable fitness tracker comes with a 1.4-inch flexible OLED display with a removable wireless earpiece tucked inside the band for users to make phone calls. Samsung released an entire range of wearables, updating the Galaxy Gear to the Gear 2 and Gear Neo, removing Galaxy from the brand name and switching from Android to its Tizen OS. Those smartwatches are also not just companion devices anymore, but standalone fitness trackers with built-in heart rate monitors, pedometers, and sensors that measure exercise, sleep, and even stress. The star, however, of MWC was the Gear Fit. The Fit has all the fitness tracking features as the rest of the Samsung line, any fitness brand for that matter, but what sets itself apart is its curved touchscreen that wraps beautifully around the wrist. It's reminiscent of these iWatch mock-ups that circulated online recently, but it's a device that already exists, and it's got journalists all over the world talking. But that's just judging based on how it looks. We'll have to wait till April to find out if it works as great. At the end of MWC, we've noticed a couple of trends. As smartphone manufacturers battle it out for market supremacy, we've noticed a focus on the budget and mid-range market. At the end of 2013, 1 billion smartphones were sold, Samsung selling 400 million of them. So everybody's going after Samsung's model and trying to focus on that growing market segment. There's also a shift towards China that is a big area for growth. And if you're looking to buy a new flagship smartphone, then I suggest you wait till we've heard from the likes of LG and HTC. LG is working on the G3, and we all know that the HTC One's successor is due in March. Then, of course, there's Google's Nexus 6, which may or may not come, but if it does come, we hear that it's coming with Google's new smartwatch. Speaking of smartwatches and wearables, what I look for in a wearable is something that's really comfortable, something that I can take to bed with me and not really feel it bothering me or getting in the way of my sleep. Something that can match my style choices and something that can help me make better fitness decisions like what I eat, how I sleep, and maybe something that can push me to take a couple of more steps in my day to day. If you're looking for a story from MWC, we've got them all on rappler.com slash technology. New episodes are posted on rappler.com slash techwrap. And if you have any emails or questions, send them over. The email address is techwrap at rappler.com. That's all for this week, folks. I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.